Hey, welcome back to Cobb's Q. Today, we're doing jalapeno hot pepper sausages. These are fantastic. We have been going around the internet, finding different recipes, and some of them are good and some of them aren't. Some of them are using freeze-dried jalapenos, some of them using fresh jalapenos, but ultimately, we ended up back on the recipe that Matt showed on Meat Church, and hands down, this was the best. Now we do a couple things different, but uh, for the most part, we're following his recipe. So we wanted to walk through this today. The bigger thing is I'm about to go north and I want to give one to my brothers. So Rob, Andrew, if you're watching this, this is what you're getting. Another thing about this sausage is once, of course, you make it, you'll notice that the casing is fairly wet. We're going to put this in the fridge overnight to first let the cure do its thing for at least 12 hours. Okay. Once that's done, we're going to put it in the smoker and we're going to let it sit in the smoke in its smoker at 50 degrees with the fan inside turned all the way on. What that's going to do is it's going to allow the outside to fully dry and ready to receive smoke and sit through the rest of the process. We're going to use six pounds of brisket. We're going to use two and a half pounds of pork butt with fat mixed in. And the brisket, we're leaving some of the fat on the cap of the brisket as well. And then we have a pound and a half of fat back. So with that today for spices, we're going to use jalapeno powder. We're going to use chipotle powder. We're going to use mustard powder. We're going to use paprika. We're going to use uh, coarse black pepper. We're going to use Holy Voodoo from Meat Church. It does a phenomenal job with this sausage. We're also going to put in Cure Number One. We're going to put in uh, hot pepper cheese. We're going to use jalapenos and we're going to use non dry fat milk. And I'm going to have the link and the recipe uh, down below, but I'm also going to put this up on the side over here so that you can look at all the amounts that we're using. And the just using the percentages, you can adjust this recipe to your liking. So we're going to go ahead and combine our spices except for the milk fat, which we're going to leave till later. We're going to mix this and get it as incorporated as possible. If there's spices that are left down in the bottom of this, when we pass it through the first grind, we'll mix it back in again, and that'll pick up anything that's left behind in the bowl. We're gonna go two passes today. The first pass, we're simply gonna get this incorporated together. The second pass, we're going to add jalapeno peppers. That'll only get those mixed in really nice throughout the entire sausage. And to get the jalapenos ready, I'm gonna take a different approach. I like to roast them first, and I use my sous vide gun. So I just put them on the big green egg, hit them with a sous vide gun, throw them in a bag, and let them sit there and uh, sweat. And then I get the skin all cleaned off of it, and then pull the seeds out. Um, everything else is put together and we'll just throw them through with the meat. This meat has been sitting in the freezer for 45 minutes. It is extremely cold, but I've got my uh, gloves on, so I think we're gonna get through two passes without uh, having to put it back in the freezer. What we're gonna do is put some of this over here. We got a whole lot of this that did not get mixed in, so once this goes through, we'll remix. Okay, once again, we get all this uh, excess sitting over here. We're simply gonna mix it back in before we put it through a second pass. Again, we're only doing two passes with a coarse plate, number 10 plate. All right, we're there. Let's put a little ice down the bottom, push out the last of the meat. go all right now we're ready to go ahead and add in our cheese and add in the dry fat milk so go ahead and sprinkle this in now this comes from bearded butchers they sell a lot of high temp cheese i'm not using cheddar today because i really like this hot cheese i think it goes really well in sausages so we're gonna stick with that first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and incorporate this in and then we'll get the dry fat milk in there and we got a little water just in case we need to go ahead and mix that in to get a good mix Need to mix this meat really, really well. Make sure that the proteins are extracted. Okay, I think that's good enough to go ahead and then get our dry fat milk in here. Meat is still extremely cold. 
the cheese had been frozen, so that helped keep it cold. We're gonna go ahead and stuff this today, and then we'll let it sit in the fridge so that the cure has a chance to convert. Okay, this is good. The proteins are good and extracted. If I take a handful, stick it to my hand, it's not going anywhere. It's gonna be a little difficult going through the stuffer at this point, so we are gonna add a little bit of water. I'm just gonna pour a little bit in, get a feel for it. So I use about three quarter cup there. And I think this is perfect. Okay, we'll get the stuffer tube ready. Get a couple handfuls in there and then we'll push it down tight, pack it, and make sure there's no air left in. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room here. We'll come back in and fill it again. Okay, we got everything ready, so let's go ahead and get our casing together. Now, I like to wash these out the day before to get all the salt off of them. Wash the outside of them really well and then put water through the inside, make sure that's clean. And then following what Eric does on two guys in a cooler, I put a tablespoon, or excuse me, a teaspoon and a half of baking soda in the water, and I mark the line to where I want that, and then I leave them in the fridge overnight. And it just helps them be a little more pliable when you get them on and when you're stuffing them. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get this on. I'm gonna put some of the water on the horn, let over, and start feeding. Okay, we're gonna tie a little loop there. Okay, you got it nice and tight. We're gonna take our corn cob picker and just stick a little hole there yeah see the cheese see the jalapenos tie that off now we're going to measure these out just press down very lightly here and make a twist and we're going to come back and this time press down and we're going to twist this in the opposite direction and do three twists and once again we're just going to keep doing this until we're happy with our twists and just be careful doing these that way you don't get a blowout okay those are good now what we do want to do is go ahead and prick this and if we see any air pockets go ahead and just pop them that one's going to sit overnight in the fridge it is time to get these on the smoker. Now for the longer string, what I like to do is just line them up. I'm gonna go uh, three down, three up, three down, three up, and that way they fit better in the smoker. So we'll snip that here. I love to take these little S hooks, just stainless steel S hooks. I'm gonna pick those straight up. Make sure we're happy with how they're hanging and separate them as much as possible. Slide them back into, we'll get our thermometer. Make sure they're not sitting on the edge of the smoker. Separate them as much as possible. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and set up our cooking profile. So to do so, we're gonna bring up the Smoking It app. We're gonna go ahead and go into profile settings themselves. We're gonna set the smoker initially at 100 degrees. <laughs> We're gonna turn on the fan internal so it works like a convection oven. We are not gonna use the external smoke generator at that point because the smoke will just push out the other way. It doesn't work. We're just gonna do that, leave the door open. That's gonna help dry out the casings for one hour. After that, we're gonna bounce up to 150 degrees. We're gonna do that for two and a half hours. Then we're gonna go into 175 degrees. I'm gonna set that for about 45 minutes. And then we're gonna to go to 195 degrees and we're gonna hold that until we reach 155 internal, at which point this will shut down on its own. So once we get to phase two, which is the 150 degrees, we're gonna start the smoke in the generator and start getting some hickory smoke on here. But until then, we're just gonna go ahead and start this and get it going to 100 degrees. It has started, turn the fan on. I'm gonna turn it on full bore. This is not going to be plugged in at this point. Even though I'm not using the generator, if I plug this in, that is an always on outlet. So it'll start trying to push air this way, which will generate this way. It just makes a mess. So leave it until the first hour is passed and then we're good to go. So again, we're gonna leave the door open and we're gonna let this go for at least one hour. All right, we've hit our one hour mark. So we're gonna go ahead and fill up our external Bella uh, smoke, cold smoke generator. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off this fan on the inside. We got hickory in here today and we're just gonna light this down at the bottom, get it going. 
give this a few minutes. Want to plug in our air compressor and I'm going to crank it all the way up initially. Just see if we see smoke coming in here. Sausages look good and dry right now. So uh, the fan did a really good job earlier. Bring that down about halfway. It looks like it's blowing in there pretty well. Put the lid on generator. And we're going to lock this up. So phase one is done. And now we've got some heat and some smoke on these. So we'll keep an eye on this. On occasion, this will go out. You just got to take a rod. I keep this rod up here, pull the cap, twirl it around a little bit. And um, sometimes that'll get it going. Otherwise, I'll hit it again with the uh, map and just get it relit. And I can usually get through an entire smoke just by doing that a couple times. Okay, we reached 155 internal temperature. So we're going to take a look at the sausages and we're going to dunk them in ice. Oh, they look beautiful. Yeah, these look beautiful. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, so let's go ahead and pull these. We're gonna dry them off, cut them, set them here, and then let them bloom. I like to cut just that little tip right next to the sausage, give it a quick pat dry, and set it on the pan. Some of these have come out really good. I can see the cheese right there inside of it, the jalapenos. I see more cheese right here that hasn't melted. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for so that when these things cook, uh, that uh, high temp cheese will be fresh and, and gooey and um, it's a great bite and it doesn't just melt out inside the sausage itself. We're going to bring them back inside. We're going to let them sit on the counter for at least an hour to an hour and a half to bloom and let that color come back in, let the skin tighten or the casings tighten. That'll help it um, come back to life. It'll help the colors come in a little bit. All right, let's check them out. We are at temp. Beautiful. Gosh, that looks beautiful. See the jalapeno? Still see some of the cheese in there. That's really pretty. All right, let's cut into this and see how we did. Oh, good and hot. Oh, wow. That looks beautiful. Look at the cheese in here. I got to do this. That's so hot. The cheese is not fully melted, which is the beauty of that high temp cheese. I can see jalapeno in here. I got some good juice coming in here. Wow. This is going to be fantastic. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this sliced. Take a taste. Man, again, look at the cheese that's in there and the jalapenos. I mean, everything comes together so nice with this sausage. Wow, the cheese just melts. All the spices blend together so well. And that holy voodoo hits it because it's got the jalapeno style flavor to begin with. Holy cow. There is no question why this is my favorite sausage. And I am absolutely looking forward to taking this to uh, scout camp. Now, let's test a bite. <laughs> snappy hot cheese is melting hands down there's no reason to make another style sausage um, there's a few I want to try but that that's my favorite give this a shot you'll be extremely happy with this recipe if you take a moment if you'll like and subscribe We'd appreciate it. Uh, we, we really value any comments you may leave below. Uh, we look forward to reading those and we'll definitely get back with you. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to share with us. Have a wonderful day.